Good morning and happy Easter. Good morning. I do have a couple of announcements before we begin worship. Um, next Sunday we'll be having a joint worship service here at 1115. And following the service, we will go down to our fellowship hall for a time of fellowship together and a uh, luncheon. Um, it's part of the five-part series about buying a sabbatical project, and this is about food and generosity. We will be learning how to cook together um, by a food instructor, Gainer Grant. We are not actually doing any of the cooking. She's just going to show us how to do paella. And there will be some little bits of cooking for us to do, and that will be some tapas for us to enjoy together. But it is a by reservation only, so if you are interested in coming to that, please fill out a slip that's over here on the table to let me know how many people are coming so we have enough food for everyone. I don't have any other announcements, I guess. Are there any other tips? We received a card today in the mail, and I'm going to put it on the board, but I know a lot of people don't look on the board. So it's just a note to say hello and wish everyone a happy and blessed Easter. Maybe I put my glasses on, I can read it better. Uh, miss you all and hope to see you soon. We're doing fine and all boosted up, so we're going to be going any, we can go anywhere. Judy and Denny Howe. Oh, great. Good to hear from them. Judy and Denny now. Any other announcements? Then let us stand for our call worship. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. The Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. The Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Death has been swallowed up in victory. Christ has risen indeed. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Thanks be to God. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our opening hymn today is Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Let us together ask God for forgiveness. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change, open to us a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
worries or concerns for us to be praying about today? Yes. Our niece, Terry Seven, passed away this morning. So we've been praying for her. And now the family of Terry needs prayers. Any others? Gracious God, how magnificent is the message that we receive today? That you are indeed risen. And our place of worship even feels a bit different with colors and shapes dancing with joy at the news of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. And the Easter lilies, which represent the coming of spring and resurrection, Lord, we too rise in hope and celebration at this good news. The journey has been long, but it does not end here. Rather, we are given new marching orders to go forth in confidence in you, for you, O oh God, to witness to the good news of the resurrection and the power of your love in Jesus Christ. Lord, we are called to be bearers of the light and your hope to areas in which darkness still stands. So, Lord, keep us open to the needs and the hearts of other people. Help us not to be so quick to condemn as we are to love. Help us reach out in kindness and compassion whenever and wherever we can for healing and hope. And remind us again of the many ways in which you have and continue to bless our lives. We pray today for those who do not feel that same blessing right now, for whatever reasons. We pray for those who are sick, we pray for those who have lost loved ones, especially for Terry's family. We pray for those who are continuing on a journey of health. We pray for Tom and are thankful that his heart catheterization had some good news with it. We pray for all those who are lonely this day. We pray for those who are affected by policies and political strategies that silence their voices. We pray for the citizens of the world that are under constant threat of violence. Especially, Lord, we continue to pray for the people in Ukraine. We ask all these things in the name of the resurrected Christ and lift our heartfelt prayers to you in a moment of silence.
5, beginning in verse 17. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am created. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered a curse. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit, nor shall not they shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall be the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. They, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. And then turning to our Gospel reading today, we go to the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, beginning in verse 1. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, Suddenly, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up, ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. Thanks be to God for the reading of God's holy word. Jeremy was born with a twisted body and a slow mind. At the age of 12, he was still in the second grade, seemingly unable to learn. His teacher, Doris Miller, often became exasperated with him. He would squir squirm in his seat, drool, and make grunting noises. But at other times, he spoke clearly and distinctly, as if a spot of light had penetrated the darkness of his mind. Most of the time, however, Jeremy just irritated his teacher. One day, she called his parents and asked them to come in for a consultation. And as the foresters entered the empty classroom, Doris said to them, Jeremy really belongs in a special school. It isn't fair to him to be with younger children who don't have learning problems. Why, there is a five-year gap between his age and that of the other students. Mrs. Forrester cried softly into a tissue while her husband spoke. Miss Miller, he said, there is no other school nearby. And it would be a terrible shock for Jeremy if we were to take him out of this school. We know he really likes it here. 
Torres sat for a long time after they had left, staring at the snow outside the window. Its coldness seemed to seep into her soul. She wanted to sympathize with the foresters. After all, their only child had a terminal illness. But it just wasn't fair to keep him in her class. She had 18 other youngsters to teach, and Jeremy was just a distraction. Furthermore, he would never learn to read or write, so why waste any more time trying? Well, as she pondered the situation, guilt washed over her. Here I am complaining about this situation, and my problems are nothing compared to that poor family, she thought. Lord, please help me to be more patient with Jeremy, she prayed. Well, from that day on, she just tried to ignore Jeremy's noises and his blank stares. Then one day, he limped to her desk, dragging his bad leg behind him. I love you, Miss Miller, he exclaimed, loud enough for the whole entire class to hear. The other students kind of snickered, and Doris's face turned bright red, and she stammered, why, why, that's very nice, Jeremy. Now, please, go sit down. Spring came, and the children talked excitedly about the coming of Easter. Doris told them the story of Jesus to emphasize the idea of new life springing forth. Jeremy listened intently. His eyes never left her face. He did not even make his usual noises that day. Had he truly understood what she had said about Jesus' death and resurrection? She gave each of the children a large plastic egg. Now, she said to them, I want you to take this home and breathe back tomorrow with something that reminds you inside of it of spring and shows new life. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Miller, the entire class and all the children responded enthusiastically. All but Jeremy. Did he understand the assignment? Perhaps she should call his parents and explain the project to them. That evening, Doris's kitchen sink stopped up. She called the landlord and waited an hour for him to come and unclog it. And after that, she still had to shop for groceries, iron a blouse, and prepare a vocabulary test for the next day. And she completely forgot about calling Jeremy's parents. The next morning, 19 children came to school laughing and talking as they placed their eggs in the large wicker basket on Miss Miller's desk. As they completed their math lesson, it was time to open the eggs. In the first egg, Doris found a flower. Oh yes, a flower is certainly a sign of new life, she said. When plants peek through the ground, we know that spring is here. A small girl in the first row waved her arm. That's my egg, Miss Miller, she called out. The next egg contained a plastic butterfly, which looked almost real. Doris held it up. We all know that a caterpillar changes and grows into a beautiful butterfly. Yes, that's new life, too. Little Judy smiled proudly and said, Miss Miller, that one's mine. Next, Doris found a rock with moss in it. She explained that moss, too, showed life. Billy spoke up from the back of the classroom. My dad helped me, he beamed. Then Doris opened the fourth egg. She gasped. The egg was empty. Surely it must be Jeremy's, she thought. And of course, he did not understand the assignment or the instructions. If only she had not forgotten to call his parents. And because she did not want to embarrass him, she quietly set the egg aside and reached for another one in the basket. Suddenly, Jeremy spoke up. Miss Miller, aren't you going to talk about my egg? Flustered, Doris replied, but Jeremy, your egg is empty. He looked into her eyes and said softly, Yes, 
because Jesus' tomb was empty too. Time stopped. And when she could speak again, Doris asked him, Do you know why the tomb was empty? Oh yes, Jeremy said. Jesus was killed and put in there, but then his Father in heaven raised him up. The recess bell. While the children excitedly ran out to the schoolyard, Doris cried. The cold inside of her immediately melted away completely. Three months later, Jeremy died. And those who paid their respects at the funeral home were surprised to see 19 eggs in a basket on top of his casket. All of them were empty. I found this story about Jeremy and his empty egg a long time ago by Ida May Kemper. Kemper. We all know the story of Easter and the empty tomb about Christ's resurrection and the new life that God offers to us. But have we fully grasped it? Even after all these years, if you read the resurrection story in each of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four of them have a slightly different version, such as who went to the tomb first, who saw what, who greeted them there, and what they initially did about it. But all of the Gospels agree on two major points. One, the stone was rolled away, and two, the tomb was empty. And that's exactly what Jeremy had understood about the story of Jesus. But let me be clear on this resurrection Sunday. There is some ambiguity in the emptiness of a tomb. Because that emptiness can feel even heavier mixed with a ton of anxiety. Personally, I have felt that way on many a Friday or even on a Saturday, and on the rare occasion when I'm extremely desperate on a very early Sunday morning when I'm staring at a black page, blank page and nothing on it for a Sunday morning sermon. But even more so, when after my sister's death last year, packing up her entire apartment, and staring one last time before walking away at the emptiness of it. An empty place at the table, and then an empty side of the bed where someone used to lie, an empty chair where someone used to sit. Emptiness like that, or like that of a tomb, can feel like an endless void that will suck you into deep despair and grief. But it can also, from the resurrection story, lead to the miracle of transformation, which can happen for every single one of us. Every morning has the potential to be a resurrection morning. Every morning has the potential to be a day of transformation for you. Every day holds the possibilities of new beginnings. And sometimes, perhaps often, it's a mix of those two things. The old dies out, and a new is born. Sometimes these things happen gradually. Sometimes they happen suddenly. And even sometimes they happen catastrophically to us. Yet in it all, the good news is that God has not, has not left us. God's presence is always with us, closer than even our own breathing. Because nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. But sometimes, you've got to go all the way to the emptiness of that void and that empty tomb. Get it. 
May God be with you this day. For he is risen, risen indeed. It is now time for our offertory, and our choir will be singing Because He Lives, and we invite the entire congregation to join us on the third verse.
We offer these gifts as our testimony to your glory and as our commitment as your disciples. Bless our gifts to your work in the world and to your reign here on earth. Through your blessing of our gifts, may death be destroyed and hope fill all creation. Amen. Our closing hymn is crowned with many crowns.